Uh, good day, good people. <coughs> as as uh, Comrade Tavang has indicated, I'm Mr. Stavane. I come from the Nuremberg area, working on the mining issues, especially the impacts, both social and environmental. My first slide is an indication of how successful is the new technology and as applied by the, by the mining companies as they operate. There's, there's, there's always a justification of, 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 of each and every impact. Companies are always telling us that they're applying the latest technology and therefore the, 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 the mining industry has improved and uh, they are environmentally friendly. But the truth is, I took this photo at one of their operations. Not very long. It's an indication that if, if they can't handle uh, themselves properly, once they operate, therefore they can't, go to the, uh, they can't come to the public and say, we are doing better. The Whitbank area is dominated by, by, by mining activities. Some of the old abandoned mines that are, have been burning since the 1930s up until today. Emitting gases day and night right throughout the whole year. And what surprises, there's always an argument that those mines are abandoned and nobody is taken care of. But the truth is, even the active ones, there is burning taking place. There is burning, with, with, even as we speak here today, you go to any, whether it's BHP, Extrata, uh, 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 Anglo American, or any of these big, big companies, there is burning taking place day and night. So those cases, companies will not account for, and the impact that they'll have to the community or to the ecosystem as large. One of the provocating questions, why did nature bury some of these minerals so deep and separate? Maybe nature decided to bury these minerals deep so that there could be life on earth. Maybe bury these minerals separately so that the climate can allow for temperatures that will ensure our existence as humans and other animals. You hardly find gold with coal. You hardly find diamond with coal, copper, all together in one, in one area. They were buried separately. They were buried separately. And they, they differ in the levels. You find gold deeper. Sometimes our, 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 our coal is is accessible, it's not that deep. But the reality is that they separate, nature separated these minerals. And what we are busy doing, we are busy bringing these minerals together to the surface, and we've got a way of justifying. We, 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 we talk of climate change. We don't know whether our digging or mining of these minerals and the fact that we bring, they come with certain or particular gases has a contribution to global warming. We have not researched on that. But the fact is that we, we, we bring gold together with coal, copper, manganese, all of this we put, to, put them together, whereas nature has decided to separate them. As I said, I come from Whitbank which I always tell people that it's like hell on earth. We've got more than 10 very, very old mines that some of them started burning since the 1930s. TMDB, which is about 880 hectares, is burning, is discharging uh, acid mine drainage, I mean AMD. Sometimes the pH is about 2 which is almost equivalent to battery acid. We have been to the site not very long. We also went to one of the mines in Clarinet, where we tested the water, together with the Council for Geoscience. 
the quality or the pH level was at about 1.7 something. So it has moved from sulfuric to something called nitric, which is very dangerous. So all these abandoned mines are not located very far from, 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 from residential areas. They are located, some of them within a hundred meter radius. And some of them are located in between uh, 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 settlements. 10 DB is, is located on, uh, on the west side of the township, but unfortunately further west, there's another township, uh, 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 the new Guapuka extensions. So you, 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 you find communities having to, cr to cross in 10 DB, which is collapsing, burning underground, and discharging uh, 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 contaminated water or acidic water. I'll try to 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 jump because of time. We've got we've got areas where we, we, you won't even notice because probably of the vegetation. This picture was taken in TNTP and the worst part of it is that we have had victims, people falling into the sinkholes. And all of that is not doc documented or accounted for by either the mining companies nor our government. The worst part of it, we don't even have an emergency service of trained people to act, can actually respond to such situation. Once you fall into the underground workings, it's burning underground is very hot. People just disappear and they die. We have had quite a number of people who had, some of them who survived with their legs burned. <coughs> if, you, if you drive around with them, you see many areas like this, which is an indication that there is fire underground. There is fire underground, there's the burning. Day and night, this is the contribution, and it has been burning like this. Sometimes the flames will rise to, to the level of about five meters. It is sometimes as if there's gas burning. So the problem is the land has been transferred back to the hands of our national government. It is now the responsibility of our government to actually deal with areas like this TNTP. When we all debate and argue about nationalization, the truth is that nationalization does take place. Because we are only nationalizing environmental problems. Once the companies have mined out the coal and they've left disasters or problems, then it becomes the responsibility of your government. And the worst part of it, does our government have the capacity to can deal with such problems? Because it comes to a point where our government will clearly go out and, con uh, 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 and, 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 and contract private companies, consultants, who, them, who they themselves are not actually going to be, 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 be pay, pay, pay their allegiance to community issues. Because some of the consultants have been funded by mining companies when they were still busy studying at the higher institutions. Some of them have got contracts with mining companies, which do not jeopardize. They sign some, some confidentiality clause with these companies. So if, your gov if our government signed a contract with a consultant that has actually worked with one of the mining houses, I do not expect the truth to come out. The report that will submit to the government is falsified. And finally, it will come to the public as the correct report. These are sinkholes all over. 
weapon. We've got communities that are living in some of these abandoned mines. Who have built shacks, staying with their families, and next to acid water, which is seeping from the underground. So, the, this so-called economic contribution by the mining companies is questionable. Because I mentioned TNTP, in 1997 the study indicated that it was going to cost our government then 4.7 billion just to fix the problems in TNTP. One mine out of more than 10. If it is 4.7 billion in 1997, the cost might have tripled by now. So where are those so-called economic benefits? Because we are beginning to pay back and the mining houses or mining companies are gone. And the worst part of it is that TNTP used to be owned by a particular mine. That particular mine changed its name and was sold to another one. And somewhere, somehow, there was some collaboration with a particular government official or minister that they alienated all the, the, the liabilities, that these would be the problems of the, of the government. When we've got such coal mines that are operating, I, I think we all know, we are mining coal in our country, mined by private companies. But at the end of the day, all the good quality coal, the first grade is exported. We are left with the third grade or lower grade coal, which produces uh, 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 high levels of, 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 of sulfur dioxide. And whatever that is left gets dumped next to poor communities. This is coronation. When they have dumped, poor people are actually forced to go and scavenge for that available and still burnable coal for home cooking or using it at, at home. So we have had incidents where people will dig and go underneath the heap and the heap will collapse on them. We have documented more than 10 people who died in coronation just because of this. And it's all happening in the name of economic development. It's coronation again. Different times it becomes worse in winter. It becomes worse in winter. You find such places all over if you drive around with them. Water affairs will bear testimony to this, but this is the scenario in Whitbank. Water is seeping from all the old mines onto the surface. And where this water has taken over, nothing grows. Nothing grows. It just kills everything. You must also remember, when your, 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 your quality of your water is impacted, so is the quality of the soil. Because you will never plant anything here for many years to come. It's an errant photograph of an area which is hidden. We do not have recreational facilities in our townships. It is known. We do not have recreational facilities in our township. Not even swimming pools. So in such open areas where there are evaporation ponds, acidic water, filling, filling those evaporation ponds, you get the kids coming in to swim. The impact on their lifespan, their health, whether it's fertility or whatsoever, but this water will have impact in the long term. The pH 
the water with a pH of about 2 flows down into the streams, into grass spray, club spray, finally down the olifants. So you get a, a prolonged of an impact down the stream. is economic development. We've got lakes, not of clean water, but of acid water. Man-made lakes. So we can justify that the uh, companies are creating jobs, contributing to the economic development of this country. But the truth of the fact of the matter is that companies are not here for charity. They are not here for charity. If we are to make them to work for charity, they will disappear. They will leave South Africa. They are not here for charity. So they are here to make profits and they do that by using this job creation as, some, as a magnet to, 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 to actually fish our souls. There's the, in, the, in the olden days, they used to, 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 to apply the pollen pillar system of mining, which is the underground mining. Towards the end of the mining project, companies always reduce the size of the supporting pillars which they have to leave in order to support the ground. They reduce it. By that re re reduction, over a period of a few years, the ground starts collapsing. And you must remember, when that happens, it's now the responsibility of, of your government. Let me jump, jump this. The location of, 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 of the coal seems in different levels. Always. If you, are, if you are to do mining, you either impact, you always impact on, 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 on the underground water team. You always impact on the underground water team, one way or another. And we've got communities that are dependent on boreholes. So when mining companies in Whitburn either doing their open cast mining, have they considered the communities down the stream? Are they aware that this AMD, once it filters down into other water tables down the stream, is going to affect the farming communities? No. Those are costs that we are not calculating. There is economic development. Water is accumulated in the, under, in the old underground workings. Even in the, in the current open heat mining or open cast mining, there is the impact. Water will just seep through from one level to another. And you must bear in mind that there's an indication that the Whitbank Dam will soon be contaminated. It means that for the community of Whitbank and surrounding areas, water will be too expensive, not very long, but very soon. As of now, members of I mean, community, member, community members in Whitbank are actually spending a lot. Some of them, they don't drink the water from the tap. Because it comes out of the tap sometimes brown. Looking exactly like the water that you get from the, 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 the evaporation ponds. So these are the externalities that are paid for by community members. One of the evaporation ponds again, or part of the lakes. This time, not in TNTB, in another area called Darnet. The question is, can we afford?
to allow our government to continue to spend money which is supposed to be used for something else, including the damage that has been caused by the mining companies. When this water flows finally into the loss of them, it causes a damage. When we engage with mining companies, their argument is, you know, your municipality is, is not helping sewer well. Your municipality is not helping the sewer network very well. There's always a discharge of sewage into the rivers, and this is the cause. They always justify. They always justify. I'm moving. If this water can kill animals, what it means is that with the prolonged or, or with the current rate of, 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 of mining, we are going to, to have the whole of the elephants, a, a, a dead stream or a dead river, if we allow for that. To continue. Well, our water is polluted. And and, 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 and let's understand one important thing. The salty water is always found in the sea. The water inland in the underground water tables is supposed to provide for life. Not only us as humans, but for other animals as well. So, if, if we contaminate the water inland, if the underground water tables are filled with AMD, how are we going to survive? How are we going to survive? My argument is, we both scientists who always argue there's a solution to each and every problem. But my argument, again, I, I differ with them because they were not there when nature decided that so much water must be located in the sea and it, it, it be salty, and so much clean water must be located inland and in the underground water tables. They were not there. Nature did its own scientific research and decided to allow for life to carry on on Earth. They come in today to justify and they are unable to come up with, with solutions to some of the problems. If our scientists are successful, then we should not be having such problems in the open air. We should not be having such problems. We should not. The entire province is under threat. Whitbank is finished. That is why some of the tourists, and you know, one will wonder why are tourists, when they land in Johannesburg, they just pass Whitbank. Apparently, when the drivers are being told to drive as fast as possible. <laughs> They just pass Whitman into the north end. But Whitman is finished. All the yellow dots are indication of, 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 of the current mining activities. And the red ones, the new applications. The new applications. What it means is that we are going to, 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 to have the whole province looking like Whitman, not very long. The problems are going to multiply. <laughs> if you go out and talk to mining companies, job creation, 
economic development, this and that and that and that. And, and they, 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 they capitalize on the fact that our government officials talk to them from the, a, a, a disparate point of view. Talk to them from a dis dis disparate point of view. When they are poor and the person is holding a lot of money, it's easy for that uh, 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 person or company to, to take terms for you. So we are challenged whether to allow the disparation by our government officials to destroy our poor province or our country. The sitting in the independent COP17, it may produce some, some results or it may not. But the truth of the matter, we expect our government, when it, 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 it represents us here or misrepresents us there, to do something local. Practical. Change the situation. Change the way in which you do things. Do not just allow for mining companies to mess up our environment. I went, I went to one specific mine before I, 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 I went to the to, 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 to civil society uh, uh, action plan in Deben. That mine is operating, we've got so many of, of, of such mining companies in Pumala. They operate without mining payments. I went to one of them and I, I spoke to the general manager. I said, I would like to talk to your environmental manager. He was open and said, we do not have one. We do not have one. That is, it's, it's a mining company. They don't have a permit. When we call the offices of DMR, the phone keeps on ringing. No answer. So why does it exist? Why, do, why are people getting salary if they don't even answer or respond to issues? I thank you. Thank you.